Well, <laughs> is that okay? Okay, we had a little trouble with sound this morning. I want to make sure you can hear me talk about our amazing award recipient. Now you can't hear me. Okay. <laughs> How about that? Okay, and I trust that you will all let me know if you can't hear me or I'm too loud. I could be a little louder. Oh my God. All right. You are right, Chris. I can't be too loud. Okay. We're, we're waiting on a couple of people, oh, several people, but I'm going to get started and they might trickle in. So, welcome to the welcome and welcome and hello. Uh, welcome to the 2024 Alumni Association Awards Ceremony. As I assume you know, given that I show up in most of our publications, uh, and you just saw me walk across the bridge this morning, and some of you work with me, I am Dr. Diane Lynch. I am Dr. Diane Lynch, the president of Stevens College. And it is my absolute honor to welcome you all back home to campus. I also would like to thank you for joining me this afternoon to celebrate the two very special alumni we will recognize today. Not surprisingly, they represent the epitome of what it means to be Stevens College. They have pursued their dreams and achieved remarkable success in their professions and in their communities. And they have given back to those professions and communities and always to their beloved alma mater. The college presents the Alumni Service Award each year to recognize an individual who has achieved an exceptional record of commitment and contribution to the college. So many of you, so many of our alumni, dedicate so much of their time, talent, and treasure. Oops. Oh, dear. There we go. To Stevens. But there are those alumni among us who truly have dedicated a lifetime of service. This year's award is a memorable example. It recognizes the decade of contributions, time, talent, and treasure of an alumna who has given so much to Stevens, despite the roller coaster related to the program she loves. And she has never given up. Instead, she addresses the challenges, meets us where we are, and always finds the right way to make a difference. Please join me in recognizing the recipient of this year's Jean Clinton Roshlob Alumni Service Award, Sally McClure Jackson. Oh wait, Sally, Sally. I have so many, I have so many wonderful things to say about you. <laughs> Sally is a Stevens woman and is ready to speak, but I have a lot of wonderful things to say about you first. First, actually, I would ask uh, your family members uh, to please stand and be recognized. And Anna Maria Knipp, you count. Can you please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Anna Maria's family. Thank you. I often say that the best way to serve Stevens is to remember Stevens, to put Stevens first on your list of volunteer commitments, outreach activities. We can provide enrollment materials for all of you to take home and distribute. And yes, of course, philanthropy. Sally Jackson is one who, for decades, has continued to say yes first, which is one of my mantras, as you know, we say yes first to every opportunity and possibility to support Stevens. And as you can imagine, we never stop asking. Sally started her life of service to Stevens nearly 70 years ago, in 1955, when she was elected president of the Prince of Wales Club, serving and leading 100 members in producing two horse shows and many other projects on campus and in the community. Sally has achieved extraordinary professional success as a horse trainer an equestrian in one of the most competitive industries in the world. That experience and professional insight are, of course, invaluable to our equestrian students. Her influence and presence are felt at horse shows around the country and the world, 
and she never passes up an opportunity to talk about Stevens and its impact on her life. <laughs> Nobody knows that better than Anna Marie. She walks that talk, providing scholarships to high school writers interested in pursuing a Stevens education. Her generosity extends to any and all needs of the equestrian program, support for and recruitment of students, engagement of alums, incredibly reputable representation in the industry. When Sally says Stevens College is an amazing institution and a great equestrian program, everybody believes her because it's Sally. And an unmatched dedication to preserving the reputation of the program that she loves. On top of all this, Sally is an incredibly accomplished artist, casting beautiful, stunningly beautiful sculptures of cherished horses as part of her life's work. It should come as no surprise that she has gifted Stevens an extraordinary piece of art, one that we have placed on public display in the reception area of our equestrian program, and one that is one of the most beautiful works in the college's collection. Sally is a true Stevens star in her heart and her soul, a woman who embodies the very best of what we stand for and aspire to becoming. I am so deeply grateful to her for her enduring patience, undying patience, her steadfast generosity, and for me, for all of us, but particularly for me, I would say I am so grateful for her trusting friendship. We have a video celebrating Sally's accomplishments in service, and it gives you an opportunity to also see some, part, some pieces of her incredible works of art. Are we ready? For Sally McClure Jackson, the indoor sport of equine sculpting is merely an extension of her outdoor life as a horse lover, trainer, and champion competitor. Horses have been Sally's passion since she was a child in Kirksville, Missouri. Sally's life has always included horses, whether training them for competition or casting their likeness in clay or bronze. She is an award-winning trainer, and several of her sculptures are prominently displayed in the United States Equestrian Federation collections, the Kentucky Horse Park, and the Westmoreland area of London, England. Sally always knew she wanted to attend Stevens College because as a child, Shirley Hardwick, director of the Stevens Equestrian Program, would go out of her way to help Sally at local equestrian shows. During that time, the Stevens Equestrian Program was considered the best in the country for saddle seat riding. During her time at Stevens Campus, Sally served as president of the Prince of Wales Club. Sally graduated from Stevens College in 1956 with her associate degree in visual arts with a minor in equestrian studies. She then completed her Bachelor of Fine Arts at the University of Texas at Austin, finding time to compete with the UT Rodeo Club team in barrel racing and goat tying. Sally returned to the Stevens campus to teach writing classes for several years. Sally's accolades are numerous. She has twice won the Five Gated World's Grand Championship at the Kentucky State Fair. Her horse, Wild-Eyed and Wicked, twice won the American Saddlebred Triple Crown. Sally has even tried her hand at racing camels. In 2023, Sally was inducted into the International Saddlebred Hall of Fame. In 2022, Sally won the U.S. Equestrian's Pegasus Medal of Honor, recognizing individuals who have exhibited outstanding service to horses and the sport through their dedication. Sally also has been recognized for her sculptures. Even with grand accomplishments and a robust life, Sally has found the time to be a dedicated supporter of the Stevens College Equestrian Program. She and her husband, Joe, donated the electric entrance gate at the stables, she also donated world champion horse, Cats Don't Dance, to the Stevens Equestrian Program and funded a new roof for the riding arena. In 2022, Sally generously created the Stevens College Equine Studies Scholarship Program, offering not just one, but two scholarships open to high school juniors and seniors. Not only has she personally funded scholarships to her beloved alma mater, 
but Sally goes above and beyond to raise awareness of Stevens College and the equestrian programs as she travels to competitions. She has been known to take Stevens marketing materials with her to share with promising young riders. The college is grateful for Sally's many contributions and her unwavering support. Sally's the face of Stevens in the American Saddlebred business. To know Sally is to know that you don't have a conversation with her without her remarking that she went to Stevens College and the impact that it had on her life. I can't tell you how many times we've traveled and I get to carry the box of Stevens promotional material and watch her hand them out. So it's an everyday passion in her life to keep Stevens foremost in people's minds, past, present, and future. The equestrian program is one of those programs that is out in the community in a really visible way. And so having alumni that are equally engaged with that is critical. Uh, and it inspires other alumni to do the same kinds of things. Even for programs that are mostly behind the scenes, they need our support too, and they need alumni support too. So having prominent alumni in the equestrian program out there setting the stage for our other alumni is really important to us. And I wanna thank Sally for her efforts on our behalf. We're really proud to have you as an alum of the equestrian program and of Stevens College more generally. We couldn't think of any anybody more deserving of this award. You're such an inspiration to us and your support, whether it's out there on a daily basis at the horse shows or providing scholarships for our students or supporting the development of our equestrian program over these many years has been absolutely wonderful and congratulations. Sally, I can't begin to describe what you have done, not just for me um, as a program chair, but what you have done for this program and what you have done for this college, I find trouble finding words to describe how grateful we all are for you and for all the efforts and time and money that you have invested in this institution and in this program year after year. It's well deserved. She's accomplished so much in her life as an athlete, as an artist, as a horse owner, as just a, a successful business person, overcoming things that I think she probably never dreamed in a million years that, that she would take on in her life. She did it successfully. She gives Stevens the credit for it. So I can't say how proud I am to have her as a friend, and I can't say how proud Stevens should be to have her as an alum. She's the best. Congratulations to equine trailblazer Sally McClure Jackson, the 2024 Jean Clinton Rochelob Class of 1944 Alumni Service Award recipient. Well, when Stevens got me my first job, I, uh, a director of horsemanship at Golf Park College, I soon found myself on the way to a girls' school in Mississippi that I didn't know much about. And also on the way, I started thinking, you have no idea what you're doing. And you really, you really can't do that. And so I thought, well, it's a little late to turn around now. So uh, I, I started work and just started doing kind of like what looked like had to be done next. And it wasn't long before I discovered that, you know what, Stevens really had prepared me. They really had given me the confidence to do this. And I had no idea. So that, that, was, uh, that was a big help. And then, uh, I could rem I would think back and I'd remember when I was a student here and Mrs. Hardwick, who was director of horsemanship at, at school here when I was here, and she used to say, I really like giving Sally jobs to do because she will paddle her own canoe and I don't have to worry about it. And I thought, that is the funniest phrase. And so, but anyway, 
I got to thinking about it later, and then really, uh, when the school called and said, you know, we would like to, to give you this honor, and I'm like, well, I'm thrilled, but uh, so I got to think about it, and I thought, you know what? I guess that my biggest takeaway from Stevens and my, the biggest gift that they gave to me was teaching me to have the confidence to paddle my own canoe. And so that's, I, I thank you all for this award and I thank the school for teaching me to paddle my own canoe. Thank you. Put your phone down. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Okay, yes. Yay. Okay. I'm gonna remember that, Sally. Paddle your own canoe. <laughs> it's a great one. Okay. So the Alumni Achievement Award is presented each year in recognition of an individual whose talent, intellect, work ethic, and personal integrity have propelled them to the pinnacle of their profession. The award pays tribute not just to success, though we celebrate success, but to the character and qualities, the 10 ideals qualities, reflected by the recipient's continuing connections with and commitment to Stevens. It is my honor to recognize Kristen Atwell Ford, class of 91, as our 2024 Alumni Achievement Award recipient. Applause. <laughs> Kristen could not be with us today because you will not be surprised to learn that she has some professional obligations that she could not miss. She was very great when I called her to tell her. I have the honor of calling the recipients and informing them of their award. And she, they are always humbly amazed and surprised, which speaks to their character. Um, and she, but she had just started a new, a new role and a new job. And she, try, she said, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. And then she called, which Stevens women do that. And then she came back and she said, I just can't. But... She is going to be back on campus in the fall to spend time with our students uh, and we'll instruct and inspire them. So we will take that as, we'll take that instead. So um, Kristen is the model and ideal of a Stevens woman. She's a woman who sees a story that needs to be told and finds the most compelling way to do it. She's a writer, director, producer, and perhaps most importantly, a keen listener and observer. Her reputation for professionalism, grace, and charm precedes and follows Kristen in everything she does. It is bolstered and informed by a sharp intellect, the highest of personal and professional standards, and a Stevens woman's assumption that she can do anything, and so she does. That combination of strengths and talents propelled Kristen's life and career paths to incredible impact, achievement, and reputation as well as a track record of influence and success that truly elevates the stories about the people and landscapes whose stories she tells. Kristen was born and raised in Arizona, exploring the wilderness, canyons, and people that blend in harmony to become the American Southwest. She's a performer, a talent she comes by naturally from growing up with a mother who hosted Romper Room, children's TV show in Phoenix. Does anybody else remember Romper Room? Rom <laughs> I was like, Romper Room? It's like Mick Jagger for me. 
uh, in Phoenix in the early 60s, and a woman who played a historical role in the story of women's reproductive health rights in the pharmaceutical industry. Kristen was one of our original self-initiated majors. Some of you heard me earlier today talking about Stevens does everything first. We were, you know, we're first. Well, we were one of the early colleges in the country to allow students to create their own majors. Many of you may remember that. She combined English, theater, theater, women's studies, and humanities into a degree that fit her life's goals. She was a member of the Searcy Honors House Plan and one of the last students to live in Laura Stevens Hall where she shared the experience with many of students who became her lifelong friends. Kristen began her film career at Concentric Media with, the, with Academy Award nominated filmmaker Dorothy Fadiman. In 2001, she produced, I'm gonna go through a list of some of her work. I could be here for a couple of hours going through all of it, but um, Kristen produced her first documentary, Quartzite's Fall, A Wilderness Tale, about the destruction of a whitewater river rapid in Arizona's Salt River Canyon. Sorry. I should have put page numbers on this. Sorry. In 2002, Kristen produced and edited Woman by Woman, winner, winner of the 2002 Freddie Award for Women's Health, about women providing medical services for other women in the villages of India. In 2017, she co-produced the world premiere opera, Riders of the Purple Sage, based on Zane Grey's legendary novel, and then directed a film about the creative process behind the opera that won three 2021 Rocky Mountain Emmy Awards, including Best Arts and Entertainment Program and Best Director. Her film, Castle Hot Springs, Oasis of Time, explores the first luxury resort of the Arizona frontier on the lands of the Yavapai tribe and it won the 2020 Rocky Mountain Emmy for Best Historical Documentary. Her most recent documentary, The Weight of a Feather, explores the deep significance of feathers to indigenous cultural identity. It won four 2023 Rocky Mountain Emmy Awards, including Best Science Environmental Program and Best, Writers, Best Writer. And if that's not enough, she's also the proud recipient of the 2021 Arizona Governor Arts Award and in 2022 was recognized as one of In Business Magazine's Women of Achievement. Next up for Kristen is Miss Sherry and the Pharmacologist, which documents her mother's highly publicized decision in 1961 to seek a therapeutic abortion after taking over-the-counter medication during her pregnancy that she later discovered contained thalidomide, a drug known to cause serious birth defects. Her experience was pivotal in the national discussion about abortion rights and helped expose the dangers of thalidomide, which was banned in the United States in the early 1960s. We have a video that highlights some of Kristen's unique and beautiful work, as well as some congratulatory comments from her classmates who pay tribute to a friend they all knew was bound for greatness. She is not with us today, but she is with us virtually, and we will have her on screen after the video to say a few words. Kristen Atwell Ford is an Emmy Award-winning director, producer, and writer, and the proud recipient of the 2021 Arizona Governor's Arts Award. She has been entrusted with telling some of Arizona's most important stories, from safeguarding the state's water supply to reimagining the mythology of the West. Born in Arizona, Kristen grew up immersed in theater and wilderness adventures. Storytelling is in her DNA, as her mother, Sherry Chesson, was the hostess of the children's TV show, The Romper Room. Between performing on stage, apprenticeships, teaching writing classes, and graduating from Stevens College in 1991, Kristen explored the canyons and rivers of the American Southwest. These dual interests in nature and the performing arts create a rich blend in her work. For 20 years, Kristen has been an in-house producer for Quantum Leap Productions, a full-service video services and messaging boutique. Kristen recently wrote and directed The Weight of a Feather, which explores and honors the profound significance of feathers to Native American cultural practices. The Weight of a Feather won four 2023 Rocky Mountain Emmy Awards, including Best Science Environmental Program and Best Writing and Editing. 
In 2017, Kristen co-produced the opera Riders of the Purple Sage, which tells the story of three master American artists who take inspiration from Arizona's landscape to create art. She documented the opera's creative process in the film, Riders of the Purple Sage, The Making of a Western Opera, winner of three 2020 Regional Emmy Awards, including Arts and Entertainment Program and Best Director Long Form Content. Water is a subject that runs through much of Kristen's work. In 2019, she was trusted with the story of Castle Hot Springs, a fabled spring on the ancestral lands of the Yavapai people that gave rise to Arizona's first resort. Kristen wrote and directed Castle Hot Springs' Oasis of Time, winner of the 2019 Emmy Award for Historical Documentary. In 2011, the Salt River Project tapped Atwell to co-direct and write Theodore Roosevelt Dam, Arizona's Living Legacy. The film celebrates the dam's role in creating water certainty and the state's water economy. The film won the 2011 Regional Emmy Award for Historical Documentary. Also with the Salt River Project, Kristen wrote and co-produced the 2016 Emmy Award-winning environmental special Protecting the Source and the film Fire and Water which traces the impact of catastrophic forest fire on the water supply in the desert. Attending a women's college and being surrounded by strong women influences in her career influenced her work. Kristen produced and edited Woman by Woman, winner of the 2002 Freddie Award for Women's Health about women providing medical services for other women in the villages of India. In 2001, Kristen produced her first documentary, Quartzite's Fall, a wilderness tale about the destruction of a whitewater river rapid in Arizona's Salt River Canyon. Kristen is currently producing the documentary feature, Miss Sherry and the Pharmacologist, which examines how her mother's battle for reproductive rights in 1962 impacted drug safety in the United States and Sweden. Kristen is honored to live and film on the lands of the Yavapai, Navajo, Opi, Maricopa, and Apache people in Arizona, where she makes her home with her husband, Dennis Ford. Um, as I stayed involved volunteering for Stevens College, I was able to reconnect with Kristen and find her amazing career. And I also was able to connect her with some of our classmates that she had lost touch with. And I can just say she's gone from strength to strength. And you can see as she piles up the Emmys and we hope the Oscar is next. And she has stayed true to, you know, what she has always been passionate about and kept those people in her life and their stories, and I cannot wait to see what she does next. I mean, she's just always so positive, just was so positive and just such um, a breath of fresh air to be around. I just remember Christy being the kind of person that almost felt otherworldly, ethereal, and mature and ahead of her time. And she, she just, I mean, always was a light a spirit and a light around her, which I love. Congratulations from your entire class of 1991 and all of the alumni. We are so proud of you and we cannot wait to see what you do. Congratulations, Kristen, on your Alumni Achievement Award. You've been such a champion, embodying all of Stephen's 10 ideals for so many years, really since we graduated, which wasn't that long ago. You are a true visionary making important work, which is so critical in today's landscape. We need more women in the industry telling our stories. I wish you a wonderful alumni weekend and hope that everyone in the room has a terrific Stevens experience because it is a place we all love so very dearly. And Kristen, I can't wait to see what you do next. Congratulations. Christy, you have always been beautiful, amazing, bright, light, and inspiring to everyone that you have been around. And I am grateful that you are in my life. And I feel this moment for you. And I want you to shine and soar and continue to thrive like you always have. And you are so, so deserving of this. Congratulations to Kristen Atwell Ford, the 2024 Alumni Achievement Award recipient.
Kristen is Kristen going to be joining us? She is. There she is. Kristen. Hi. <laughs> Unmute. There we go. Um, I'm incredibly touched to see Erlene and Laura and Beth and to be in the chapel again with all of you. I, I do apologize that I couldn't be there in person, but you know that I am there in spirit with you and I can't wait to be back on campus this fall. Um, when Dr. Lynch called me with the news um, that my Stephen sisters had named me with the recipient of the Alumni Achievement Award, I was very humbled and a bit perplexed because so many of our alums make the world better, make our communities brighter, make our families warmer, like Sally. And how did I end up in this company of diplomats and national journalists and iconic actresses and a vice admiral of the US Navy. And then I realized that the alumni recipient award is the, the same thing. I have the same thing in common that we all have with these women, which is we went to Stevens. And uh, I grew up with a, a bright outspoken, feminist icon of a mother and a father for all his good traits and his love of history and wilderness that he instilled in me routinely dismissed the women in his life. And so growing up, what I thought or felt was often discounted because of my gender until I got to Stevens. And I arrived as a last minute alternate to the Searcy House Plan Program. And we took literature and the humanities with James Shirky and philosophy all together. And those shared courses with that group of students set the tone for my four years on campus full of academic exploration and sisterhood. And that community living experience continued as we grew together through summer times at Perry Mansfield and our intentional community of artists and outliers at Laura Stevens. But I was really, really lucky my freshman year because I was given Dr. Thomas Dillingham as my counselor. And Dr. Dillingham taught me that mythology and storytelling were worthy pursuits. And in some of our courses, he taught me that language itself evolved between humans from tending the fire. And if, if language developed from tending the fire, then the stories we tell around the fire are the kindling for our hearts. He's also the person who told me when I said, you know, I was going to write about this, but somebody else already did it. And he said, you haven't written about it. You haven't said what you need to say about it. And that stayed with me when uh, my community of river rafters lost a beautiful natural feature in the wilderness of Arizona. And I thought, you know, even though this has been written about, Dr. Dillingham said I should do this and I'm, I'm going to do it. And that became my first film. I was drawn to women's studies and the English department for my years on campus. And I learned, as my mother found out in 1962, that the personal is political. But mostly thinking about my four years on campus, I'm reminded of a time when I had a certain bravado that gets tempered <laughs> as, we, as we grow older um, and are humbled by life. But I also had a fearlessness about setting pen to paper. And I really thank you for reminding me of that because it is with a profound debt of gratitude that I owe to my professors, Judith Clark, Bertrice Bartlett, Carol Perkins, Marita, Dr. Dillingham, Dr. Shirky, um, all of these people who nourished me to think critically, speak in my own voice. And it has provided the foundation for my life's work. I'd like to just take a moment and speak to the challenges uh, that women at Stevens are facing now. 
And sometimes I envy the millennials because they have so many beautiful examples of, of women in leadership. They are the lean in generation and women no longer have to act like men to be leaders. We can just act like people. And that's incredibly, incredibly liberating. But isn't it interesting that at a moment in history, when the brilliance of women is no longer constrained by archaic notions of gender roles, that forces, 20th century forces, 19th century forces in the state of Arizona are rallying to diminish women's power by withholding medical care. There are people so just desperate to enforce their worldview that they're willing to withhold life-affirming medical care, fertility-affirming medical care, liberty-affirming medical care from women and transgendered people. So wherever you stand on the issues, I hope we can agree that all human beings deserve, deserve dignity and safety and should not suffer discrimination based on gender. My other concern for all of this, all of us in this moment, in our moment in history, is the rise of artificial intelligence. It's here. It's going to be an incredibly powerful tool that we embrace in business. But there is one thing that AI cannot do, and that's care for the people around it. And we must hold on to the reality of our human connections and nurture that. We must be the human firewall. Don't give up using your heart and your mind and your voice to connect with people. In closing, I'd like to share what this award means to me personally. And uh, first, I want to thank my very brave mama, Sherry Chesson, for setting the example of how to stand up for ourselves when the whole world is against you or feels like they're against you, because there were a lot of people who were with you and are with you and are proud of you. And I will always be proud of you because I wouldn't be here unless you had stood up for what was best for your family. I'd also like to thank my dear husband, Dennis Ford, who makes me enjoy being a girl. <laughs> and uh, I was saying to Dennis when I told him the news about this amazing award from, from this community that means so much to me, he said, you know, aren't, aren't you a little young for a Lifetime Achievement Award? And I thought, you know, my, my thoughts exactly. <laughs> I mean, this is why I love this man. And um, I'm incredibly lucky to have him. And this award is incredibly well-timed for me because I just turned 54 years old, which is the age that my brother Mark was when he killed himself. And at a time when my brother decided that his life was over. You have reconnected me with a community of women, men, teachers, and lifelong students. You have said to me that you hear me and you've given the op me the opportunity to say thank you for listening. It's a gift of such magnitude that the only words I have are thank you. And thank you for the beautiful flowers. Kristen, 
this is awkward. I'm trying to speak with you. You can. I don't want you to see my back. Thank you, thank you, for not just being here in spirit and heart and intellect, but in such deep, passionate care for human beings in general, and for those of us in this room, and for all of the women, all of the students, all of the faculty, all of the employees, everybody who is Stevens. What a beautiful, accurate articulation of the community I serve and the community that we are. And thank you for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. This is the first of your Lifetime Achievement Awards. <laughs> we expect to see you here again in 30 years. Well, thank you. And, and Sally has set an amazing example for involvement with Stevens, and I, I hope to make her proud, too. <laughs> we are going to count on that. And we, and, and we will see you in the fall. Yes. And as you were speaking, all I could think about was what an impact you are going to make on the students who today are as passionate and maybe a little brash and confident and outspoken and imaginative and brilliant and young as you all were. And I know they will remember what you tell them. And I know that you will make such a difference in how they think about themselves in the world. So we are so grateful. Thank you so much for joining us. We will remember your brilliance and your generous thoughts, ideas, and heart. Thank you so much. Thank you for forging me. Now's the place, now's the moment where I and others would hug you, so just feel it from there. Okay. Thank you so much, Kristen. Okay. As we close our annual recognition celebration today, I have to say that was such a Stevens moment, wasn't it? so glad that we are all here. I want to take a minute to thank and acknowledge all of our alumni community and family members for all you do to support and care for your alma mater, your commitment and unwavering faith in the power of a Stevens education as it has been expressed and articulated and lived out by our award winners today. I know that it continues to inspire and motivate not just everybody in this room, but the generations of students who have followed in your footsteps. All of those, all of those amazing students who are on our campus today. It's such a proud legacy and a truly out, outstanding and lasting collective achievement. Stevens is one of only 26, and there are fewer than that if you get picky about what it means to be a women's college, which I do. Um, 26 women's colleges left in the United States today. And it is because of you, each and every one of you, that you remain strong and resilient and optimistic about the future. We are here, we are going to be here, and we are going to be here to give Kristen yet another Lifetime Achievement Award in 30 years, I promise. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Sally, thank you for being here. And thank you all for being Stevens. We'll be in touch, yes, I promise. <laughs> thank you for your service. Yes, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Take care.